And so it is the first solar eclipse of the year. The Ring of Fire annular eclipse is happening right now. So Derek Pitts is always amazing. Our chief astronomer over at the Franklin <laughs> Institute. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for waking up early. It is Good glorious to see. You. Absolutely. So what's happening? Well, uh, what we're seeing is we're seeing the sun sliding across the disk, seeing the moon sliding across the disk of the sun as it appears to us. It's actually the moon in its orbit around the Earth, uh, uh, just a little bit farther away from the Earth than it normally is. That makes the moon look a little smaller, and so that creates the ring effect that we would see. If we could see the complete ring, we'd be able to see a complete ring of fire around the sun. Our location isn't good for that. We'll see about 70% of the sun's disk covered by the moon. Yeah, so this is low on the horizon. If you're uh, at the Jersey Shore, you'll see some stunning images. But in Philadelphia, unless you're high up, not so much, right? Uh, that's true. It's, uh, that's going to be a problem if you're here because of the obstructions of trees and buildings and things like that. I have uh, good friends down in Strathmere that are getting a good view of it through some broken clouds uh, down there, and they can see it quite well. It's only going to last for us for uh, about another, uh, let's see, 30, 40 minutes and then the moon will slide off the disk of the sun. And that's actually what we're seeing right now, is we're seeing the moon as it's sliding off of the disk of the sun for us. So even though the eclipse continues for other people in other places to the north of us, through Canada and up across the polar regions and over to, believe it or not, western Siberia, <laughs> and if you're a polar bear, you're in a great <laughs> position to see this, uh, this event. But, you know, the other thing you can do is you can just check out my Franklin Institute logo here, which is a partial solar eclipse, right? Oh, how cool. I don't think I ever made that connection. Amazing. So um, we're showing beautiful vantage points right from our cameras. But if you're looking with your own eyes, it's important to wear those special glasses. Right, so you have to be really careful about this. It is tempting to want to look at this directly with the naked eye, but you really shouldn't, even though there may be some slight cloud cover that makes you feel as if it's a good idea to look without any protection. You really need to use eye protection for that. And the eye protection I recommend, of course, is a solar eclipse viewer, uh, sort of like this one that you see here. I'm trying to be careful about my reflections. <laughs> but if you have one of these left over from the 2017 solar eclipse that was visible in this region, you should use that to view because any yeah. small part of the sun, any small part of the sun is just as bright as all the rest of the sun. And even though you may not think you're getting any kind of damaging radiation, you are. Yeah, so I want to protect do those that, eyes. You should use the glasses to view carefully. You mentioned 2017, the, the last uh, eclipse here. How often does this take place? And what, what is the difference from years ago back in 2017? Well, it all has to do with the geometry between the sun, moon, and the earth. Where is the earth at in its orbit at the time when the moon moves into a position between the earth and the sun? And that determines where the shadow of the moon is going to fall on the planet. And the, those paths can fall almost anywhere, except they happen to be predictable in certain cycles that we can follow across time. And we can see these same cycles showing up over and over and over again. So now the difference between 2017 and this one is that that particular eclipse belonged to a different cycle than this one does. In this particular cycle of eclipse, for this one, we see this annular eclipse in which the moon is blocking light from the sun when the moon is a little bit farther away from the Earth than average, and that makes the moon appear smaller. So back in 2017, it was a different situation entirely. The moon was just at the right distance to create a total solar eclipse. So it depends which cycle of eclipse the, the, sure. the, 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 the geometry is in. And we've been able to track and predict solar eclipses thousands of years mm -hmm. back into the past and thousands of years forward into the future identifying the cycles so we know which ones will fall either over Philadelphia really or other places around the world. is amazing, just stunning, and we're all smarter because of you, Derek Pitts. Thank you, always. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. Enjoy the eclipse. Thanks. And to all of you, thank you for waking up early. Please do enjoy that eclipse. It's amazing.